I'm going to show you one of the projects that I just recently uh, finished the first stage, and it's about rebalancing roads for multimodal transportation. Uh, a little bit about the project. So uh, the project location is Route uh, 234 business or Southley Road in Prince William County. If you are from Virginia, you should be uh, familiar with that location. This is one of the VDOT strategically targeted and affordable roadway solution or STARS project. Uh, and a study progress includes reviewing existing conditions, public involvement, operation analysis, and alternative development. So goals of this project uh, are congestion mitigation, safety improvement, and multimodal corridor. For the multimodal, we are looking at uh, improving pedestrian access with added sidewalk connections, shared use path options, bus route improvement, additional stops. The chart you are seeing on the top right is the result of MetroQuest survey uh, from the people working or living in the area. Uh, as you can see, 41% of those who usually drive would prefer other modes of travel, including 60% uh, for transit, 11% walking, and 13% biking. So that made us uh, to use streetlight data, actually. Uh, so for rebalancing road uh, with using a street light, we still need other types of data. Other sources of data that we use are VDOT continuous counts, peak hour turning movement counts that we collected, NRIX speed, British congestion scan, historic crash records, etc. And why a street light? Because all this other type of data cannot give us some useful information that a street light can. Uh, including walking and cycling data, trip links, origin destination data, home and work location of travelers passing through Route 234. So first I want to talk to you about uh, what we can do for walking and biking. Uh, so I looked at uh, census block groups adjacent to my study area which is kind of starting from Battleview Park all the way to Godwin Drive. As you can see, there are some spots that there is no sidewalk, including the one under I-66 bridge. And unfortunately, last week, there was a fatal crash between a bus and pedestrian. So it's really heartbreaking to know that in your study area, something is happening and you wish you done this sooner so you could avoid that. But I think we all have to live with the reality of what's going on in, on our roads. So here, 27% of all trip lengths are less than two miles. So if you look at the map, a uh, shade of green shows uh, actually total daily trip per square mile. And then size of pie charts are based on the number of trips. And then color in the charts are showing trips less than a mile uh, for light blue, trips between a mile and two in dark blue and the gray, uh, all other trips that are uh, longer than two miles. And then we took it a little bit further and looked at uh, volume and trip purposes. Again, pie chart size showing uh, kind of magnitude of trips and the trip purposes that we have here at a, a street light based on AECS are home-based work, home-based other, and non-home-based. So most of trips are home-based, other, and non-home-based. We are not that surprised because this corridor is shopping attraction and many people are uh, going to the plazas, to shopping malls, and to some of the, the national uh, international food markets, and they access it through the Sudley Road. So we feel like those trips can be a good candidate of walking, biking. So we kind of... Uh, zoomed in a little bit more and looked at trips less than two miles with no kids because these trips are good candidates for walking and biking if we have safe infrastructure. So we can see that in a range of like less than a 500 to all the way about 4,000 per uh, census block, we have trips that are less than two miles to the Sudbury Road. Even if we uh, we'll be able to turn a percentage of these trips to walking, biking. That will be a congestion mitigation solution with no cost. 
So based on the uh, data analysis, we suggested uh, two different types of shared use path. Option one in purple and on top of the screen uh, using the existing median. And then option two at the bottom is along the southbound, given the activities and current infrastructure that could be a more cost efficient uh, option. How about transit? So for transit, um, we ran home and a work location analysis, and then we used a half a mile distance from local bus stops to where people work or live. As you can see in this uh, two um, maps, uh, we have like kind of this hexagonals as a work home location on the left and work location on the right. And then the highlighted yellow are half a mile distance from bus stops. You can see there are so many grids with high uh, number of trips with no access to transit. So this is another thing to consider in this, uh, in this project. However, um, right on the road, uh, because we know that currently there is no bus stops, why there are several uh, bus routes that are passing through, we highly recommend to adding bus stops to encourage people to take transit when it's possible. Um, and that could be another uh, uh, more choice for them to do so. So the suggestion of locations are kind of based on demographics and a different infrastructure around. So uh, as you can see, starting from I-66 down to Godwin, first we suggest one uh, near international market, which is like less than a mile access and a local church. And then a little bit uh, down, uh, we suggested another station on uh, South Bend for uh, very close to medical center. And then uh, the North Bend bus stops is suggested at the retail plaza and adjacent residentials. And then after we are uh, passing Sudley Manor and Le Mans, which is actually the bottleneck of traffic, uh, we suggested uh, two other or, or a pair of bus stops uh, because one of them is very close to the senior housing and the other one uh, give access to retail plaza and medical center down there. Uh, and then uh, as we are uh, moving to the south toward Godwin, uh, we made a suggestion for a pair close to school at the new residential uh, at Godwin and also medical rehab uh, and Walmart center. So you can do it for your project. And I'm gonna show you general steps to create the same analysis in Insight. Uh, you can do the analysis using trips to from preset geography and uh, I select a US census block group. You can use TAZ or any other kind of like scale that it's suit your study. And I select them adjacent to the study corridor because um, I was interested to less than two mile trips and then uh, select sample months. Don't do it for 12 months. Uh, and then select your day type and parts. I recommend using all of them because you never know. For example, in this study, midday trips were much higher than a.m. and p.m. peak. And then uh, definitely select your trip attributes because you need lengths and select traveler attributes because you need trip purpose and with or without key. And set outputs to volume. The other one is zone activity analysis to find home and work grids. Uh, you're going to create a zone around your study area and then again select sample months, trip attributes, trip traveler attributes, and then select home and work metrics. You can select visit, reside, or work in the zone. I usually select all of them and then set your output for all vehicles.